Okay, you may now start. Hello everyone, good morning. My report for today is about the uh, city LGO local government unit specifically in the city. Um, next slide first. This. Um, and generally, the meaning of the city is relatively permanent and highly or organized center of population of greater size or importance. Next slide. Every city in the Philippines is divided into barangay. The city can be classified as highly urbanized, independent component cities, and the component cities, like for example, here in uh, um, Region 6 in Iloilo, the province. Um, example is the uh, Pasi city. It is a component city. Next slide, sir. There are 146 cities of the Philippines as of September 7, take note, 2019. 33 of these are highly or urbanized cities. Um, five are independent component cities. Um, when you say uh, independent component cities, these are the cities that um, can uh, vote uh, or not independently. Uh, they can they can waive their vote in, in their constituents to the, the province if there is a an election time or um, pwede sila ka vote or pwede hindi. Next, with the rest being component cities are um, of their respective provinces. So the rest is the component cities, as I mentioned earlier. Um, one of uh, the example is uh, the Pasi city in Iloilo province. Next slide, please. The Philippines cities are spread across the country approximately 7,641 islands because we are archipelagic. We are archipelago. So um, we compose of, as I mentioned, 7,641 islands. These islands are divided into three geographical divisions, namely uh, Mindanao, Visayas, and Luzon. So we, are, we have three areas um, or division uh, in the island of the Philippines. So this, the country has a total of 145 chartered, chartered cities. Um, chartered, chartered cities, uh, meaning city incorporated under special charter and similar expressions refer to cities like Manila and Baguio, incorporated under the special laws, re relation of administrative code to prior law. So these are the examples of the chartered cities. Um, also, Ido Ido cities is one of the example of chartered city. Classification of the local government code of 1991, Republic Act number 7160. This is, as, as I mentioned earlier here, there are three um, um, areas. So the highly urbanized cities, independent component cities, and component cities. Next slide. In highly urbanized cities, uh, are local units autonomous from provinces that have a minimum population of 200,000 and an annual uh, income of at least uh, 50 million. So um, before you create a city, this is the requirements in creation of a city in 1991 constant prices. So independent component cities are cities outside of the provincial jurisdiction. So um, provinces are, uh, um, so may, may kwan siya may, like, uh, hindi ka intervene or wala diya ya, hindi siya part sa province and hindi, hindi, hindi ya connected sa, sa province kay independent siya um, although some are allowed to participate in the election of provincial officials as I mentioned earlier um, it depends pero, but the local government like the uh, the independent component cities example their mayors are have the right or uh to uh, impose na hindi mag-vote ang ilang mga constituents in the province. 
Um, so that have not yet attained the highly urbanized status, while component cities are those under the province's jurisdiction. In addition, each city is class classified into six income brackets according to income in a four-year period. For instance, first-class cities have an income of 400 million or more, while sixth-class cities earn uh, less than 80 million in a four years period. If there is a classification uh, to create a cities or requirements to create a, a cities, there is also a, a a classification on how you rank the cities, like from first class down to the second class uh, cities. Next slide, uh, uh, sir. Um, yes, highly urbanized cities. Annual income of at least 50 million pesos. So it will not be lowered down 50 million incomes and population of at least 200,000 inhabitants. So less than 200,000, it could not be considered as the highly urbanized city. Um, city na matawag. The land area of is 100 square kilometer. Next slide, please. In independent component cities, from voting of provincial elective officials, independent component cities are independent of the province. So it is um, reiterated that um, the, uh, 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 their constituents in the independent component cities are not um, obliged to whether they wanted they want to, to, to vote for the for the provincial election or not. Cities whose charters prohibited their voters. Next slide, sir. The, the next is component cities. Component cities are those under province's jurisdiction has an average annual income of at least um, 100 million in the last two consecutive years based on 2,000 constant prices, either a population of at least 150,000 inhabitants or a contiguous territory of 100 square kilometers. So this is also the Um This is the creation and modification. So with this, uh, it's stated here in the matrix that um, how, how city is uh, created and the requirements there and uh, who is the, the uh, agencies or department of or branch of government that uh, would uh, uh, modify uh, um, are authorized only to modify is like for example the city the 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 agency that uh, are authorized to that is authorized to modify this is only the congress so gagigin is a congress and I, if there is a changes or revision or modification. Next slide, sir. The two branches of local government, the executive and legislative. So um, in the local government, there are only um, the two branches, the executive and legislative, because um, uh, judiciary is not practiced in a local government. <laughs> Um, all courts in the Philippines are under the Supreme Courts of the Philippines, and therefore, there are no local government-controlled judicial branches, as I mentioned earlier. No, no, do local government have any prosecutors or public defenders, as these are under the jurisdiction of the national government. The only we have is the legislative, which is composed of the councillors or the SP members, or even the in the barangays, the barangay kagawad or sangkodi ang barangay officials. Next slide, sir. Offices that are common to cities, um, mandatory and uh, optional offices in the city government. Um, next slide, sir. We'll see the mandatory and optional offices in the government. So the, in the matrix, here is the offices that are uh, mostly uh, uh, our transaction, people transaction, our our constituents uh, have their cons uh, transaction. So these offices are, as I mentioned here, the office of the secretary to Sangunian. So somehow uh, this is only for the local government. 
um siguro tayo to sangunian uh ang head and then yes as here there is yes so sa city na siya um treasury office so headed by the treasurer or city treasurer um assessment office city assessors um accounting office accountant or city accountant or uh, budget office uh, budget officer or city budget officer planning development office or city planning or planner and development coordinator so this is designation or the head engineering office or the city engineers uh, city engineer uh, officer health office or headed by the health uh, city health officer and office of the local registry the civil the local civil registrar um, head or officer next slide sir next offices are the office of the administrator administrator um of course um the designation is the administrator or to be specific the city administrator and uh, the one who sit a city administrator in either the city is mr milchor tan office of the legal services legal officer so the, this is where you can see the um our our in the legal city legal office our uh, attorneys or lawyer there working in the city government specifically in the legal office um agriculture office of course city agriculture is officer um social welfare and development office um of course the city social welfare development officer five um headed by in Iloy, the city headed for example headed by um ma'am teresa um larida Hiologo, our city social welfare development officer in Iloilo city office of the Arch architectural planning and design so we, this is where you can see the the our, our architects our professional architects in the city government public uh, information office um like for example uh we have social media etc uh those propaganda of the city for example the city government the facebook and all the 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 media platform that is used by the city government that is under the public information office and all those information that comes from city rmo like for example we can that we we receive in text messages that there is typhoon etc disaster so that is part of or under the public information office next is um next office is the office of for the development of cooperative and cooperative development office so cooperative development specialists so there and we have in besides the uh the uh uh, Balwarte Elementary School, the pioneer uh, school in the Philippines. There we have there the cooperative um, office in beside the Balwarte Elementary School. Next office is population office. So this is where we have workers like the they, they called in the barangay as um, a BSPO, a Barangay Service Point Officer. And they have their population officer in the city. We have Barangay Paid BSPO, and we have also City Paid BSPO. So since we are focusing on the city, so we have City Paid BSPO under the population or uh, city population office. That they are the one who who go around the barangay and check um, the data of the people in 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 the area those who are deceased those who are um being born and those being uh, and all from 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 the in infant to 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 seniors uh, to check the data if, if, if it is updated the next office is veterinary office or city veterinarian so very um um no need to explain the city veterinarian office because it's all about the um, animals and the city veterinarian is the uh, head of the office the public order and safety office are poso so we have here in the city for example um pstmo public or uh, safety and uh, officer uh, 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 office in iloilo city so in general they called it poso or public order and safety 
So when you see, they are the one who you see in in the um who, who uh facilitate the the the, the traffic who officiate those um, clearing of the roads and the safety of the people around Iloilo, around the city next is the pub uh, tourism office so it called the the city tourism officer so no need to explain that um public inform employment services office peso um other people uh, ordinary people do not um do not uh, understand what is PESO since this is an acronym of Public Employment and uh, Services Office for an employment of the people of the city, for example. So this is the uh, agency of the local government in the city that um, produces and give uh, work to the people and uh, they are the one who advertise or they are the one who introduce the people to uh, different or variety of, of jobs that are available in the city to give um, um, people um, jobs or works and to mitigate the the unemployment rate of one city next is human resources management and development office so each offices whether it is private or public and also in the city government, there is a HR, so no need to to explain also. So the head is the HRMD officer or city HRMD officer. The next is disaster risk reduction and management office or the RRM officer. So they are, this, this department are um, responsible of the calamity disasters that are happening yearly. Because, for example, we are always struck by the many, many, um, a variety of typhoon every every year, a series of typhoon every year. So, because ginagyan kita permi kabagyo, and they are the one who is responsible. This this office is responsible not only typhoon, everything like um, fire, um, storm surge and the flood because Iloilo city is also flow prone for from uh, to, in, in flood to flood and the uh, next office is the economic enterprise and development office which is more about an economic and the head is the eed officer or city eed officer the next one is the office of the mayor so the office of the mayor is the father or the mother of one city and uh, no need to explain also so he is the one who ran or she is or he is the one who ran um the city for for the common good of every, every everybody the next office is the office of the vice mayor so the office of the vice mayor so uh, office of the vice mayors uh, do not have a very heavy task or obligation or responsibility so like for example, for um, I'll set an example like a uh, vice president or any uh, um, uh, in that in that position that um, they are only waiting for. We are not uh, assuming uh, ang isa ka mayor or president, but they are just only waiting for for the mayor if the mayor is um, not functioning or not doing his or her job, or the mayor will. Uh, will died uh, but also they have also a, a, a function but not so much uh, next office is the solid waste and environment management office or SWIMO or SWIMO head um, in our in the city um, I believe they called it in Iloilo as because under me, the health and sanitation in Barangay as chairman, as Barangay Kagawad, so they're the one who are um, called of solid waste management and how to segregate um, um, waste. Uh, so to, to in order to, to maintain the cleanliness and the sanitation of each or one city. Next office is the Environment and Natural Resources Office. 
So this is all about um, natural resources. So the head is the Environment and Natural Resources Officer. Next office is the Nutrition Action Office. Uh, and the officer is called the City Nutrition Action Officer. This are no 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 need to explain further for this because uh this is more about the nutrition uh, more about food about about the 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 uh, the supplement that uh, will be given to people like for example to lower down the malnourished children in one city next is the office Next office is the office of the Sangguniang Panglunsod. So, the office of the Sangguniang Panglunsod is composed of uh, uh, of the um, city council or SB members in the municipality. But in the city, is the uh, uh, city councillors. So, the presiding officer here, not the first uh, city councillor, but the, pres uh, the presiding officer is the city vice mayor. So, in the absence of the city vice mayor, the succession, the, the next in the rank, the first city councillor will do, uh, will preside the, the meeting or the, the session. And, and, and in the session, there is a uh, representation of each agencies or each, even NGO to hear if, uh, what is the hearing all about. Next is the prosecution office. The prosecution office, uh, of course, headed by the um, city uh, prosecutor. Next is the office of the senior citizens affairs or OSCA. Um, OSCA head. Um, we have. If you can, if you hear, there is also another um, association of the senior citizen, which is PESCAP. So PESCAP, um, it is also legit and authorized but the the priority of the city government is OSCA or office of the senior citizen because this is this association of the seniors is under the city government under the city mayors next and they have a lot of uh, of uh, benefits here so they get their pension their quarterly pension and uh, any dis discount when whenever they buy um, foods and uh, medicines or, or vitamins. Next, person with the uh, disability of uh, affairs office or PIDAO. So they cater those uh, disabilities, um, those people who are handicapped, those people who have incapacitated uh, mentally and uh, physically so they help those people so they have also discounts in uh, in their medicines or food next slide sir the compensation of elected city officials um city mayor so i haven't um given the a uh, certain, or I mean, the specific amount of uh, the the salary of each uh, position here, because um every year or every two three years there is a, a increase or what they call oh, I forgot the, the the term, but there is an increase. So I don't know what uh the updated uh, what is the updated the uh, specific uh, number of the salary of each of the of the uh, local official. So let's start with the city mayor. City mayor has a salary salary grade of 30, 30, 30 or so it is in highly urbanized cities, and the city vice mayor for highly urbanized city has a salary grade of twenty eight. So. City mayor in the component city has a salary grade of 26. And the city vice mayor in this component city as well as a salary grade of 26. Same with the, with the mayor of the component city. The Sangguni Ampandun Sod has a salary grade. This is for highly urbanized city. Um, salary grade of 27. And the Sangguni Ampandun Sod uh, in the component city has a salary grade of uh, 25. 
but roughly i see the 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 salary in 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 figures of the city mayors in a highly urbanized city i see it as uh, when i check it in last 2019 so it has a 150 something thousand per month in a highly urbanized city next slide sir What is the wealthiest and the richest city in the Philippines? So in 2016, Quezon City was the wealthiest in the Philippines with approximately 60 billion Philippine pesos worth of asset value. The city is also known as the largest city in Metro Manila in terms of area and population. But na sila. Uh, I'll mention. The, uh, uh, I'll discuss uh, lately. Um. Based on the Commission on Audit in 2019, annual financial report on local government Makati's total assets, as, as mentioned earlier, increased to 233.78 billion pesos from 230.83 billion in 2008 and 196.57 billion in 2017. So, um Quezon City. When it took the top spot for from yes from Quezon City, completing the top ten list for, for, of richest cities for 2019, are Quezon City with 96.4 billion. So, but in area and population, in terms of area of population, still the number one is the Quezon City. But na ungusana sa because of the income, income. Um, next slide, sir. What is the youngest city in the Philippines? So, the one that declared a city. So, pinakalate nga declared nga city. Santo Tomas in Batangas is the newest city nga create siya. After the plebiscite held, resulted in approval of the ratification on September 7, 2019. Next slide, sir. The oldest and first city in the Philippines, of course, very obvious, Cebu City. The country's oldest settlement, it is also one of its most historic and restrained much of flavor of its long Spanish heritage. It was the first Spanish settlement and first capital of the Philippines. But one of our um, speaker before, um, in your subject, sir, said that... Um, Quezon City, I think, uh, once become a a capital city of the Philippines. Or, I mean, yes, the capital of the Philippines. Next slide, sir. Position of the elected city officials. Um, yes, uh, city mayor, vice mayor, SP or city councillors. Next slide, sir. The term of office of the elected city officials. All elected officials take not have a three years terms. It can only serve a maximum of three consecutive terms before being ineligible for re-election. So only three years lang galas ang pagpungko of each um, local official. Not like in Barangay, they always postpone the, the election. Next term. Ne next slide, sir. Age qualification of mayor of highly urbanized cities, vice mayor, highly ur urbanized cities, sangguniang pangsud, highly, ur highly urbanized cities, independent component and component cities. Age qualification. To qualify to be a candidate for mayor, vice mayor, or councillor in an highly urbanized cities, a person must be at least 23 years of age on election day, while candidates for the position of mayor or vice mayor and councillor of independent component cities component cities must be at least 21 years of age on election day next slide sir the function and responsibilities of an lgu livelihood programs environmental sustainability and energy efficiency of the city and the quality of its service delivery 
it's uh, spatial form and spatial form and it's infrastructure of course there are always an infrastructure in any local government financial resources and governance if it is good or bad so one mayor should or local official should run for a good governance next slide sir Section 448, Rule of the City. The city consisting of more urbanized and developed barangays serves as a general purpose government for the coordination and delivery of basic regular and direct services and the effective governance of inhabitants within its territorial jurisdictions. Next, sir. um that's the end i'm sorry i care i'm carried away so this this is the end of my report for today thank you classmate and sir for um patiently uh report for our discussion for today thank you.